I want to thank the okay. I want to thank the organizers, especially the Puma, for recognizing and finding me worthy to give this uh, talk. I'm indeed very grateful. I may the Almighty Allah help us in everything we are doing. Uh, I have one of my, I would have asked many of my postgraduate students to be part of this uh, webinar, but we are doing our examination. And uh, even the undergraduate students are also writing their own examinations. So they are not able to be part of it. But I have only one of them who is uh, not writing an exam today, who is part of this uh, this uh, webinar. Now, her name is uh, Precious of all over. So it's with us. Thank you very much. That's just my preliminary uh, opening remark. So I start with the paper. As we already know, my paper is titled Time and Self Management for Success in Life. Success in life is dependent upon how an individual handles the issues of life from infancy through maturity to the declining stage. In other words, whatever you give to life is what you get in return. Your ability to manage your time and self successfully will lead to your managing others successfully as well. So in this paper, we are going to look at 10 major areas. I will try to be as fast as I can. I will start with the introduction. We'll look at time management skills and techniques. We'll look at time management tips. We'll look at meaning of self, meaning of what managing yourself is. We'll look at the concept of self-awareness. We'll look at self-confidence, self-regulation. And then we'll look at managing worry and anxiety. Managing worry and anxiety. We'll also look at empathy for others. Empathy for others. And managing yourself for excellence. And finally, we'll look at the useful tips for managing yourself. The useful tips for managing yourself. So that's the overview of what we are going to look at briefly. So I start with the introduction. Today, most of us feel tremendously pressured to accomplish more and to do it excellently. To succeed in today's fast pace and changing world, we must, we, manage, we must manage ourselves effectively. Working harder does not really work. In other words, that is not the ultimate. We must work smart. We must work smart. Most of us have learned poor self-management skills. Some of us even confuse excellence and perfection. We set unattainable standards and drive them to a level of confusion. Others procrastinate until anxieties are so high that fear propels them. Clearly, such styles of management are suboptimal and make work uninteresting. Major change is difficult. Unexpected change is even more difficult. There are, there are possibilities for navigating change more effectively. We are going to look at all that. Generally, this can be achieved through building self-esteem. Building self-esteem and self-confidence in yourself and in others. Creating a climate of trust and belief. Managing by positive expectations. Empowers each person you work with or you meet 
to peak performance. You have to build top team of motivated people and unlock the full potentials of every employee. So I'm going to look at, we are looking at this paper, or I'm looking at this paper from two perspectives, from the perspective of students and from the perspective of managers, managers of organization, managers of uh, human and material resources. So uh, and I'll move on to time management skills and the techniques. Time management skills are your abilities to recognize and solve personal time management problems. I take that again. Time management skills are your, your abilities, your abilities to recognize and solve personal time management problems. The goal of this time management lesson is to show you what you can do to improve those skills. With good time management skills, you are in control of your time and your life. You are in control of your stress. You are also in control of your energy levels. In other words, if you are able to manage your time, you, you, you have control over your life, you have control over your stressors. You have control over those stressors, those things that can stress you in the course of doing your job. You also have control over your energy, your energy level. You have control over them. You make progress at work. You make progress at work because you are able to organize yourself. You are able to maintain balance between your work personal and family lives. You have enough flexibility to respond to surprises or new opportunities if you manage your time and self well. You have enough flexibility to respond to surprises or new opportunities. All the time, management skills are learnable. So there's something difficult about learning management, learning time and self-management. They are learning, you can begin to learn them. Oftentimes, you will see much improvement from simply becoming aware of the essence and causes of common personal time management problems. With these time management lessons, you can see better which time management techniques are most relevant for your situation. Just get started with them. Many of your problems gradually disappear to start managing your time and yourself well. Those things you call problems will gradually disappear because you are not better organized, you are not able to manage yourself. If you already know how you should be managing your time, but you still do not do it, don't give up. What you may be overlooking is the psychological side of your time management skill. That is psychological obstacles hidden behind your personality. Depending on your personal situation, such obstacles may be the primary reason why you are procrastinating. It may be the reason why you are having difficulties saying no. It could even be the reason why you find it very difficult to delegate responsibilities to your subordinates or making time management decisions. So your personality to a very large extent will affect this. The psychological components of your time management skill can also be dealt with. The time management skills information below will point at a relevant solution for your situation. So we now look at the time management tips, the tips for you to manage your time. 
What is the point of time management tips? Changing time management habits takes time and effort. It is always much easier when you have a simple system of practical rules and hints that are easy to keep in mind in order for you to be able to manage your time. That is exactly what the tips below are all going to be talking about. So the first tip is that know what you want from your time. You should be able to know what you want from your time. The proven way to do, to do it is to set goals. Set goals. And you set them smart. In other words, in other words, if you wake up in the morning and you know you have eight hours to work for that day, prioritize your activities. Organize your time in such a way that things or those activities that are not too relevant, you break them down. So that at the end of the day, you would have been able to achieve those very critical, those very important, those very germane activities for the day. So at the end of the day, you have time to say, yes, you have achieved what you set out to achieve for that day. Okay, that's number one. Know what you want from your time. The second point is know and respect your priorities. Know and respect your priorities. Aim to do important things first. Aim to do important things first. Remember the 20, the 80 20 rules, which simply means that 80% of rewards, 80% of reward comes from 20% of effort that you put in. Okay? One of the aim of time, time management tips is to help you refocus your mind to give more attention and time to those most important 20%. So we are simply saying that you should know and respect your priorities. For every decision you want to make, for every activity you want to carry out for that day, for every lecture you want to receive, you should know areas where you think are more important. All of them are important, but some are more important than, than others. So you must give respect and priority those, to those areas that are very important in order for you to be able to achieve your time management for that day. Another point is plan your actions for achieving your goals. Planning is simply the gap between where you are and where you want to be at a later date. Otherwise, it is a futuristic phenomenon which is very pervasive to every human being. So you must be in a position to convert your goals into a system of specific actions to be done. You must convert your goals into a system of specific actions to be done. The first significant point of planning is the planning process itself. It is a known fact, and you will see it yourself, that the planning process stimulates your brain to come up with new efficient solutions. It programs your subconscious mind to search for the shortcuts. It makes you much more prepared for each specific action. Besides, planning will help you to identify potential conflicts and crises minimizing the number of urgent tasks. Planning can also significantly lower the time spent on routine maintenance tasks, leaving you more time on what you like to do or for what you think is important for your long-term uh, success. Also, remember that planning Related to time tips, work best 
when you review your plans regularly. So what we are simply saying here is that you must plan your time. You must plan your activities. After the planning, you, also, you should also bear in mind that you must, you learn to be flexible in those plans that you have articulated for the day or for the period. Okay? Because in the course of implementing your plan, you are likely to have critical variables that may be as that, that may be infringing on the on the achievement of the overall goal. So you need to regularly look at your planning process, your implementation of the plan, in order to be able to see where you are not going the way you are supposed to go. If you identify that early enough, you'll be able to save time. You'll be able to manage your time. The next uh, top uh, issue, the next tip is schedule time for your task. I said so from the beginning that in the morning, for example, you, you wake up and you want to plan your activities for that day. You just itemize them. You prioritize them. So you must apportion time for each of your tasks. What do we mean by timing here? You see, if you don't apportion time for what you are going to do, you might overspend time doing things that may not be too relevant, that may not lead you to the goal that you have set for that. But if you plan to say, for this activity, I'm going to spend one hour, okay? Once it is that time, one hour, or when it is getting to that time, one hour, you know that you have to be fast in accomplishing that task to enable you to move to the next task. So it is very important that you schedule time for every task that you want to do in line with your prioritized plan or program for that day. Okay? Next one, know how you spend your time. Know how you spend it. This is where planning again is very, very germane. If you have planned very well, you have articulated your, uh, your activities for the day, you have planned your lectures for that day, you should be able to know the time you will spend on each of the assignments. Because if you overspend time on any of the assignments, you find that you will create problem for the next activity. And at the end of the day, you discover that you may not be able to achieve your plan, your target for that day. Okay? You can also expand this to a whole life situation. We are all growing. I keep asking myself, in the next 10 years, what do I want to be? How do I get there? These are some of the things you do in your time and self-management in order for you to be successful in life. If uh, you are a student, you must know what role, what activities you are supposed to carry out on a daily basis, your <coughs> and the entire process so that at the time of graduation, you really know that yes, you are able to achieve uh, what you have set out to do. So the takeaway from these tips are one, know what you want from your time. Two, know and respect your priorities. Three, plan your actions for achieving your goals. Next, schedule time for your task. And following, following know how you spend your time. These are some of the tips we must learn. Not just learning it, we must internalize them, we must operationalize them in our day-to-day -day activities, in our life activities, so that we can become successful in everything we have set out to do. So we move on to another subhead, what managing yourself means. There are so many different definitions, just like in management and social sciences, every concept is faced with a plethora of definitions. So in the same vein, managing yourself has a plethora of definitions, but we'll just take time to look at a few of them. And 
managing yourself and self-management. These are the two concepts we are going to look at under this managing yourself. There are two areas we will concentrate our attention on here. Managing yourself and self-management. Are they really the same? What do you think they mean? What tools have you found work for you? If you find any tool that is working for you, share them with others. Do you enjoy working with your colleagues? Do you ever feel that your job will be much easier if your co-workers just do their own parts? Good working relationships must be built and maintained by colleagues in order to be effective in their career. As we need the support of others, Okay, as someone with whom it is easy to work with, strength is gained by always being consistent, fair, and equitable in all our interactions with people, no matter what their position or title may be. I think this is very important. Let me repeat it again that respect is gained by always being consistent, fair, and equitable in all our interactions with people, no matter what their position or title they be. Every manager wants to get and achieve results. And for you to achieve results as a manager, as a student, you may not be in a position to do it all alone. That means you have to work with others. Your ability to manage yourself effectively and efficiently will put you in the right position to be able to manage others. Therefore, always care about each person as the unique and special individual he or she is. Always care about each person as a unique and special individual that he or she is. People react to the same situation in different ways. Therefore, we must learn to carry them along in the process of our management. Effective man effectively, managing, effectively managing yourself, effectively manage yourself so that others will want to work with you. And in the process, you need to develop and understand the following concepts. One, self-awareness. Self-awareness. Two, self-regulation. Three, empathy for co-workers. I want to look at these, uh, these uh, three major issues. They are so germane to managing ourselves. Self-awareness is an understanding of your strengths. Self-awareness is the understanding of your own strengths, your weaknesses, needs, and factors that motivate you. People with strong self-awareness are overtly critical, nor unrealistically hopeful. They are honest with themselves and others. People with self-awareness recognize how their feelings affect them, affect other people and their job performance. They have a firm grasp of their capabilities and strengths and are less likely to set themselves up to fail they are less likely to set themselves up for fail because they are self-confident and have good self-esteem. Self-esteem is a realistic, appreciative opinion of oneself. 
Realistic means you deal in the truth, accurately and honestly understanding your strengths and weaknesses. Having an appreciative understanding of oneself suggests that you feel good about and are at peace with the person you are. Okay? Low self esteem. Low self esteem. Low self esteem can lead to the prejudice, prejudice against yourself. When you are prejudiced against yourself, you are guilty of distorting or ignoring information that disputes your skewed perception of yourself. To strengthen your self esteem, telling your internal belief that makes David predictions about your sources and biases, your expectations. Every time you hear negative internal talk, it's just a friendly posture coming along to replace it. What I'm saying here is that when you hear negative internal talk, just picture a friendly posture coming along to replace it with the transformation that are possible and better. In other words, you have to Confident. You have to have that you have to believe in yourself that you can do it. Other methods to improve your self esteem include one, ask others to identify your strengths. You know, when it comes to a prison, when it comes to a prison, if a prison cannot give it to you, what you do. Therefore, ask others to identify your strengths and your weaknesses and your ability to recognize these will enable you to make necessary amendments and therefore be in a position to move towards better self esteem. Laugh at your weaknesses because no one is perfect. Of course, in the course of finding out from people your strengths and weaknesses, when they measure your weaknesses to you, do not be bothered so much because no one is perfect. Just laugh at it and look for ways of improving it. Put your failures in perspective as they allow you to learn and grow. Failure is normal. It is not. It's of course, starting from your student days, there are times you write an exam and you fail. And we believe that that should not be a, a, anything to worry so much about. All you need to do is to prepare better for the next examination. And the fact that you have accepted that you have failed will put you in a proper, proper edge to be able to read properly and seriously so that at the next opportunity, you have a better grade. The same thing with working in an organization. Assignments are given to you, and in the course of uh, doing it, you have a problem, and your, your subordinates is saying that, look, you have failed in this. Don't worry so much. It's an opportunity to learn. It's an opportunity for you to learn and grow. Another one is finding someone who needs your assistance and offering to help. Everybody needs assistance. We all need help. Okay? So you must find somebody to assist always. Every day when I wake up, I say, God, give me the opportunity to affect the greatest number of persons that will come my way today. And in the course of doing that, I find myself becoming happier with myself. I find it easier to manage myself. And in the process, I'm able to influence positively the lives of so many people that will come my way that very day. So that's one of the ways you can build your self-esteem. Next one is taking on a challenge to stretch yourself. 
one of my bosses will always pray when he wakes up in the morning, especially on the first of uh, January every year. At the very first day of the year, he will say, God, let this year be a rough year for me. Let this year be a challenging year for me. So when he wakes up in the morning, he'll say, God, let this day be a challenging day for me. Why is he saying this? If you find yourself in a challenging environment, it gives you strength. It gives you greater knowledge. It gives you the opportunity to be able to be more productive, more efficient. And in the process, you are able to achieve more in life. So we must learn to take on challenge to stress us. Sometimes, sometimes we say, oh, the work is too much. The work is not too, I'm saying that the work is not too much. Hard work does not kill. Hard work does not create problem. Rather, it gives you more strength. It gives you more energy to be able to achieve yeah. in life. In your academic, for the positive aspects of the business. In other words, always think, always think that everything is achievable. No matter how difficult it is, tell yourself that it is it is doable. It is possible. Always focus your better chatter on the positive aspects of your experience in life in your academics, in everything you do. I keep saying, if Mr. A, who existed or who is existing or who is ahead of you, can do it, why can you not do it better than Mr. A? So focus your mental chatter on the positive aspects always, because you can do it. Self-awareness leads to the development of self-confidence. Self-awareness leads to the development of self-confidence. I just give a, a, a practical scenario of what happened in an interview that I was privileged to be a part of. We advertised for an employment. Some persons came for an interview. A very young man who looked very brilliant came in into the panel. I was asking very simple question, what is your name? He mentioned a very long name, like that of uh, uh, Vajaya Koma, something like that. You know? So the name is a bit long. And we said, are you sure that is your name? The guy got confused and said, yes. So a member of the panel asked him again, are you sure that is your name? He said, no, 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 it's not my name. It's not my name, I'm not too sure. And we were wondering, that name was given to you from your bed. You went to pre nursery, you went to nursery, you went to primary, you went to secondary, you went to higher education. You are now being employed for a managerial position. And you are saying you are not sure of the name that you have been getting all along. What was his problem? Lack of self confidence. Lack of self confidence. So because he didn't have that confidence in himself, we didn't bother to waste our time with him. Because if we employ him, he may also not be in a position to perform the job that he's employed to do because he lacks confidence. People who lack self-confidence are apprehensive. Those who lack self-confidence are always apprehensive. They are frustrated. They are resentful and often demoralized. To improve your self-confidence, you must ask yourself, how would I behave if I were really confident? Or how would a confident person I know handle this? 
Just adopting the behavior of self-confidence will help you feel more confident. Do not keep admonishing yourself for failures. Rather, reward yourself for successes. Learn from your mistakes and move on. People with high self-esteem and self-confidence are assertive and not aggressive, which builds rather than destroys good relationship. When you are assertive, you will be building good relationships with your with everybody that come your way. But if you are aggressive, you'll be destroying your relationship with people. So being assertive means being fair to yourself and to others. Assertiveness is based on the idea that your needs, your wants and feelings are as important as those of others, as those of people around you. Aggressive people impinge on others' needs and feelings, such as not giving others credit and not listening to them and not respecting them. That's not good for interpersonal relationship. An assertive person knows how to balance aggression and passive, passive, passivity. If you are too passive in making claims for yourself, you will not get what you want and desire. And you will not be unfair to yourself. On the other hand, if you are too aggressive, you will be unfair to others. Determine exactly what you want and believe you have the same right as others to achieve that goal. If you are criticized, accept the criticism if it is valid, but refuse to be labeled at it. If you are making a complaint, Focus on the behavior that is causing the problem, not the character of the person. When asked to do something, do not yield to pressure to say yes to something that is against your better judgment. In other words, only accept those things that you know you have comparative advantage over, that you can easily carry out, that you can do well. Because if you accept the responsibility or you accept something that you know you cannot and you are not able to achieve it, you will be destroying your self-esteem, destroying your self-confidence, and you'll be losing the respect and regard of your fellow colleagues. So know your priorities, how you want to spend your time, and then decide whether you sincerely want to say yes or accepting responsibility before even accepting to take a program if you are a student. Assertive people do not seek control, but rather cooperation by examining situations from the other person's point of view. Assertive people build trust in their relationships by saying sincerely how they feel and by showing that they believe what other people say. An understanding of your true motivation is important to self-awareness. You need to know those things that motivate you. Uh, because that, those will be the, the, the driving force that will propel you to achieving your goals. Okay, Interesting, interestingly, people with high motivation remain optimistic when the odds are against them. If you, if you, you have your, you are assertive, you have your self-awareness, you have self-esteem, you are self-confident, you will be self-motivated because there will be an, an inner or invisible force that will be motivating and propelling you to achieve what you want to achieve. 
despite all odds. So at the end, you find your, yourself achieving far beyond your expectations. Again, you need to have self-regulation. You need to be self-regulated. Self-regulation means handling your emotions so you do not destroy your working relationship with emotional adversity. People want to work with people who are reasonably consistent and dependable in their interactions with them. Handling your emotion constructively enhances your integrity and trust. People who have mastered their emotions can cope with change. For example, when a new program is announced, they do not panic. Instead, they suspend judgments. They seek further information and listen to the explanations for the change. They don't jump into conclusion. So you need to self-regulate yourself. In fact, even outside the organizational perspective, even outside the academic perspective, we need to be self-regulated in everything we do. Because if somebody annoys or offends you, and you are the person who is not self-regulated, there's that likely outburst, emotional outburst that you find yourself embarking on. And in the process, you will destroy your relationship with the person. And at the end, you may be the one that will regret your action. So we must be self-regulated. The last cape of emotion, the last cape of emotions and feelings is more varied than any on earth. And the roads through it twist and turn like no other highway. Emotions should be acknowledged, not condemned or denied. The key to constructively handling your emotion is to be consciously paused when you feel yourself being emotional. And then you ask yourself, what is my best response in these circumstances? What I'm simply saying is that when you find yourself in a confused state, when you find yourself in a situation that looks very demanding, unexpected, and you feel so uncomfortable with it, do not embark on immediate answer. Calm down, be cautious, consciously pause by asking yourself, what is my best response in these circumstances? Rather than issuing an automatic response, do not issue an automatic response. You need to think, you need to assess the situation before taking a decision. For example, instead of sending a searching response to an email containing an unfair accusation, wait for 24 hours or even more before responding or talking directly with the person who made the accusation. You might feel quite differently after some time that you have paused. The anger in you may have come down. The problem may be better understood by you. But when you react immediately, you will have, you, when you pause and you consider the whole situation before reacting, you will avoid destroying your relationship with others. Bearing in mind that you need others to be successful in whatever you do and in life. Instead of blaming your boss for not seeking your input on a change, pause and think about whether you miss a staff meeting, whether your boss did not ask for your input, or see if you could provide some input anyway. Instead of feeling unhappy about not being included in a group activity, pause and ask yourself if you handle yourself 
in such a way that others want to include you, or whether it was just an honest oversight. So you must make yourself relevant for people to consider you relevant in your organization, in your class, in everything you are doing. Self-regulation is the propensity for reflection and thoughtfulness. I take it again that self-regulation is the propensity for reflection and thoughtfulness. Faced by unpalatable alternatives, people often panic and respond emotionally. They see fewer possibilities or feel more trapped than they would if they kept calm, pause, and consciously choose their best response. Learn to manage worry and anxiety, which can make you feel confused apprehensive, out of control, and overwhelmed. With self-regulation, if you properly self-regulate yourself, you'll be in a position to avoid worry and anxiety. So we look at managing worry and anxiety because these are two concepts that, to a very large extent, will determine your progress academically, career-wise, in your relationship with people, even in your marital relationships. So we need to manage our worry and anxiety. Assess the importance of what you are worrying about. Will it matter tomorrow, next, or even next year? That thing that is troubling you. That thing that is worrying you, you need to properly assess it. Is it something that is so urgent? Is it something that you can carry forward to tomorrow, next week, next year, or even longer? Resist inventing new things to worry about. Avoid any negative thing that can make you to worry. Deal with situations as they develop instead of wasting mental energy or worries ahead of time. No matter how big the problem is. Yes. So what do you mean by time in your words? Time. Time is simply that opportunity that is given to you over a period to achieve something. In other words, if I have the whole of today to achieve certain goals, that is my time. So I have to plan in such a way that I will use that time to achieve that that I want to achieve. It starts from, it's not fixed, depending on the activity that you are going to embark on. And that's why I said time and self-management for success in life. Time starts from the day of your birth and the day of your uh, exit. If you look at my opening remark, I said people uh, uh, from the time of infancy through maturity to the declining stage, what happens is your time. Whatever you are able to do within that period it leads to your success in life. Am I communicating? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, thank you. So I can continue. So we're talking about worry and anxiety. And I said, deal with situations as they develop instead of wasting meta energy or worries ahead of time. Okay? Here, we're saying that something that is going to happen tomorrow or at a later date that you see as a problem, something you are anticipating to be a problem at a later date, you're already panicking. You're already worried. You're already confused about it. 
I'm saying that no, it shouldn't be. Deal with the situation as they come. Don't create problems that do not exist or that may not even exist. Don't create problems because you are anticipating a problem. So deal with, with worry and anxiety in such a way that there will not be a problem to you. Another way to deal with worry and anxiety is to take action. Even if it is just making a list or developing an action plan, the art of writing things down helps you stop the mental chatter. I, I, I want to emphasize this. When, if you really want to achieve much on a daily basis, when you wake up in the morning, after your usual committing of the day's activities onto the house of Allah, the next thing you must do is to pick paper and pen. Pick paper and pen. Identify your priorities for that day. Identify those things that you want to achieve for that day. Prioritize them on that paper with the pen. List them out. Okay, I do that on daily basis. I start from January, for example. What I want to achieve that year, I list all of them out. Put them in a small chart. I put it very close to my door. Okay, as I open my door to go out or as I'm becoming in, I will see them and I will be regularly reminded of that target. Those things I want to achieve for the year, I will be reminded. Okay, so that will not allow me to go astray and be guided by that plan. So on a daily basis, which is the specific now, the one I designed for the year is my entire plan for that year, which you must reduce to monthly. Again, you must reduce it to weekly. Again, you reduce it to daily because you are the achievement of your daily activities will lead to the achievement of your weekly. Your weekly will lead to the achievement of your monthly. And then your monthly will lead to your yearly achievements. So that over time, after some years, you can now ask yourself, you look back and say, yes, this is the target I had five years ago. And I want to assess them. You'll be able to know. So on a daily basis, get a pen, get paper, list out those things you want to achieve that day. As you achieve them, cross them out. Okay? At the end of the day, because of un un unforeseen challenges or problems that you, you never planned for, you may not be able to achieve all of them in full. So the carryovers, move them to the next day. In other words, the carryover for today becomes your opening, opening, Come the opening of your activities for the following day. So you just find yourself doing it that way. The art of writing things down helps you to stop meta chatter. If you don't record the activities you want to do that day, you are likely not to achieve your goal or your target for that day. Because your brain may be overworked, may be overstressed, and in the course of doing that, you will not remember some that could be very critical to the achievement of your goal for that day. You may not remember. So by listing them down, writing them down, will help to avoid missing out anything. Be aware of your attitudes that are creating internal pressure. Do not tell yourself, I have to get this done, but say, I will do as much as I can in the time available. Do not say I should not ask for help, but say everyone asks for help sometimes. I would happily help someone else and that person will reciprocate. Life is give and take. Remember from the beginning, I said, whatever you put into life is what you get in thought. Okay, so when you help others, others will be willing to also help. It's reciprocal. 
Do not say others cope far better than I do. Do not say others cope far better than I do, but rather say everything is susceptible to stress. So I'm not alone in this. Okay, so your ability to plan your time, manage yourself, will enable you to achieve your goals. So we look at others, empathy for others, empathy for others. Having empathy means thoughtfully considering other people's feelings and their emotional makeup when interacting with them. Empathy also includes the ability to read people's reactions and see things from their perspective, which fosters a team approach to work. Connecting with others makes work more meaningful. Empathy comes from sincerely caring about and listening to other people. Empathy leaves people feeling understood and cared for. When people feel good, they do their best at work. This is a statement of fact. When people are motivated, motivation in this sense could be of any kind. By ways of uh, commendation, financial motivation, depending on that that you are adopting. The people, they feel good, and therefore they put in their best. Feeling good promotes mental efficiency, making people better at understanding information and making complex judgments. As a leader, as a manager, it's your responsibility to carry your subordinates along. You are, you are sitting at the driver's seat. You are the one that will harmonize all activities everybody in the system, in the organization, to be able to get them along so that you can be successful. If the organization is successful, you will be successful. If the organization fails, you have failed. One way you might use empathy is in effectively mentoring, mentoring, teaching, or serving as a reservoir of knowledge to your subordinates or students. Okay, as a teacher, as a teacher, you must effectively understand your students. I have been teaching for so many years. I know that there are three categories of students. You have the intelligent ones, very intelligent ones. You have the average students, and then you have the slow learners. You have the fast learners, you have the average learners, and then you have the slow learners. As a manager, as a teacher, as an academic, you must take this into serious consideration. Because as a teacher, your ability is to impart knowledge through teaching, through mentoring, and all that. My goal in teaching and in organizational leadership is to carry the slow learners along. My emphasis is usually on the slow learners. Because if I can make the slow learners to know, to understand, and understand what I'm saying, and they're able to internalize that that I'm doing, then I would have succeeded in carrying the fast learners, the average students, along very effectively and efficiently. So assess where each person is and try to take people as far as you can, giving them time you have with them. Do not expect them to have knowledge, skills, and abilities you have, even at the end of your time together. I emphasize this again. You know, some of us who are teachers, we expect that our students should just know what we are saying, what we are doing immediately. No, it doesn't go that way. We are saying here that do not expect them to have the knowledge, the skills, and abilities that you have, even at the end of your time together. You have developed your own skills. 
over a number of years. And they too will need time to develop themselves. It is important to also assist them in strengthening their self-esteem and self-confidence. So they are prepared to tackle the challenges their career will present and to help them develop and maintain good working relationships of their own just the way you have developed yourself and you are moving towards success. So moving towards the end, I want to look at setting, managing yourself for excellence, managing yourself for excellence. The first point in managing yourself for excellence is to set compelling goals set compelling goals. In the course of my talking, I said, I normally set targets. I would say in 10 years time, what do I want to be? What position do I want to occupy? What do I want to do with myself? So you set compelling goals. When I gained admission into 100 level, the first thing I did was, I set a target that I will come out with a first class. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. So what was your goal, sir? Actually, did you really achieve your goal and do you want to become and did you want to become a professor? That's the like point. From the I'm starting? That, that's that's the way I'm just going to now. Okay. When I joined, when, when I got admission at the hundred uh, uh, the one uh, first year, my goal was to make a first class. But in the course of movements. I discovered that I set a target that was not compelling. I discovered that I set a target that was not achievable. So I have to replan to do something not the way I expected. So at the end of the day, I was able to come out with a 2 1 second class upper. So what I'm saying is that you must set targets that are achievable. That's the first thing. Yes. What were the skills you planned to keep to achieve the first class? To read 24 hours. To 24 read... hours? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. It sounds, it sounds funny. What I mean by 24 hours? To read always. I was always guided by the gospel according to Timothy. Second Timothy 2.15 said, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of God. So my target was using 2 Timothy 2.15 as my guiding principle in setting the target. But at the end of the day, I discovered that that target was not compelling, was not achievable. So I, I came out with a, a second class upper. At that level, I now told myself, my goal in life is to be a professor. The next thing I asked myself, how do I get there? I was able to articulate those things that will enable me move forward to that level. So even at an undergraduate level, I already knew what it would take me to become a professor. I started working towards it. And to the glory of God, I'm able to achieve that goal because I managed my time, I managed myself, and I have become successful in the plan to get to where I'm going to. That's point number one. The second point is to think, positive, think, power, think powerfully. Hello? You followed, uh, you followed your time management or self-management in the every days at college. Come again. Sir, you have followed your time management or self-management in all this. In all yes. this, you mainly followed. You mainly followed time management or self-management, sir. Hey, I didn't get you rightly. Sir, now we can get. I, I did. It's not clear. You followed your time management or self-management. Yes, yes, yes. I followed it. In, uh, in all colleges. 
can act differently when meta software is changed. Top stopping, detached concern, mindfulness, and humor are tools for rewriting the software. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Give a few tips how to attain mindfulness in this corona period. Come again. Give us a few tips to attain mindfulness in this corona pandemic because okay. everyone is broken, no? Okay. One of the one of the things is exactly what we are doing now. We are, we are far away in India. I'm here in Nigeria. We are writing our meta software by this action that we are taking. So because we are in the period of uh, Corona, that physical uh, contact is no longer there. Our ability to do things, that interpersonal relationship, that face-to-face -face interaction is no longer there. So we are using software as one of the coping mechanisms in this period. So in my university, for example, I could stay in my home, in my house, and give my lectures. It's one of the coping mechanisms. Am I communicating? Hello? Yes, yes, sir. OK. So I look at the last point, tips for managing yourself. Tips for managing yourself. The first tip is to manage your energy. Tips on managing yourself. I'm saying that the first point, the first tip is to manage your energy. Eat properly. Eat good food. Eat nutritious and proteinous food. Get enough sleep. Learn to say no when necessary. Find out when the Find out in the day. Find out when in the day you operate at your peak. Find out in the day your your the day you operate at your peak. What I'm saying here is that you know that time where your energy is very high. You know that time of the day where your mind, mental alertness is very very high. You know the time will be more productive in the day. So use that time to achieve optimally. So if I wake up in the morning and I get ready for work eight o'clock, and I know that between eight and two, I'll be very effective. The energy will be there. So the whole activities I need to do that day, I have to do them within that period before the energy starts dropping. So that's the first point, manage your energy. The second point is know yourself. So eight to two is the time when the energy is really strong. Do you what? Eight to two, morning eight to two. Yeah, no, I just, I'm just using that one as an example. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I've not said so, that that is the time. I just use that one as an example. Some persons could work harder from two o'clock to six. Some could do it from 10 o'clock in the night to maybe 12 or even one. So it depends on the individual. And that's yeah. why we say find out when in the day you operate at your peak. So it is left for the individual to find out that time that he'll be more effective, productive, and efficient. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes, yes. Sir, uh, I have a question, sir. Do you prefer time scheduling or time prioritization? Based on your priorities in life, do you schedule your time or how does it uh, work? <coughs> First, we have said you should, you should plan your time. You should schedule your time. So the time available to you is already known. Then you prioritize those activities that you want to achieve within your scheduled time. Hello? Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Does it make sense? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. We continue.
continue. The second point is know yourself. Know yourself. Know what you like and dislike. And why? Know your biases. Know your strengths. And develop areas of your strengths. How you learn your role in a team. Your underlying personality. You need to know all these. Okay? Point number three, like yourself. Like yourself. Know what is good about you and what you value. Like yourself for what you are. Bearing in mind that you were created uniquely. No other, no other person on earth is like you. So you must like yourself for what you are. If you are a perfectionist, be gentle with yourself. If you are a perfectionist, don't use yourself as a standard for measuring others. Just be gentle with yourself. Don't use your, your own achievements as a standard for measuring the achievement of others. No. Number four, manage your emotions. Find ways of venting, find ways of venting or letting off steam. Choose your moments. Learn to be assertive rather than aggressive. Learn to be assertive rather than aggressive. Number five, set up positive models or images. Find positive roles or things you can relate to. Draw parallels. Visualize yourself in a winning team. Under this, I always encourage people to read biography of successful persons. I always encourage people, look for biography of people who have succeeded in life. How were they able to get there? What, was, what were the motivating factors? Those factors that motivated those persons, are they present in you? If they are not present, how can you, how can you learn them? How can you acquire them? Very important. Number six, step out of the comfort zone. You grow more and develop better when you are exposed to situations you have not experienced or which you perceive as challenges. Step out of your comfort zones. In the course of my talking, I said, I always encourage people not to be comfortable with the position they are holding now. Because when you are comfortable with the position you are holding now, you will not be self-motivated. Nothing will motivate you to aspire to the next level. Therefore, you remain where you are. But when you are not comfortable with the situation or the condition or the position you are holding now, there will be an invisible force that will be propelling you to move to the next level. That's it. Then, seven, Balance your work and life. Balance your work and life. Do you work to live or live to work? What are your priorities? You must learn to balance this between your work and your life. Next one, that's number eight. Manage your time. I've given an example of how you can manage your time by prioritizing by listing all those things that you need to do. You list them on daily basis. If I start from the beginning of the year, for this year, this is what I want to achieve. For this month, this is what I want to achieve. This week, this is what I want to achieve. For today, these are the things I want to achieve. Okay? When you manage yourself well, when you plan your time well, you'll be able to achieve them. But of course, because of the vicissitudes of life, because of the uncertainty of our environment, you may not be able to achieve all of them fully. Just like the example I gave, if at the end of the day, you have carryovers, carry them over to the next day as the opening activities for that day. And from there, you move on until you achieve success. 
Number nine, I want you to remember that it is easier to change yourself than to change others as a manager, as a teacher. It is easier to change yourself than to change others. Let me just give an example of what I mean by this. You fix your class for 10 o'clock, 10 a.m., for example. The students are there by 10 o'clock. You, the teacher that has fixed your time for 10 o'clock, you are coming by 11. Are you, are you managing yourself and your time properly? The answer is no. So if you do this consistently, your student will learn negatively. That, oh, the man will not come until around 11, until around 10, 30 and all that. So you'll be indirectly passing bad signal, bad message to your students. So we must remember that it is easier to change ourselves than to change others. We must try something new. And, and if it works, we keep doing it. We must try something new. And if it, it works, we keep doing it. Encourage others by your example. You are, you are a model. People should look on to you as a teacher, as a manager, as a leader in your environment, in your organization, wherever you, are, you find yourself as a leader, you must show good example. Believe in yourself even when no one else does. Believe in yourself even when no one else does. Do not look back in anger. Do not look back in anger or forward in fear but around in awareness. Do not look back in anger. You know, there's no time for lamentation. Whatever is past is past. Put them behind you and look forward positively, not in fear. Look forward positively. And then have full awareness and grasp of your environment. Okay. In conclusion, you can be what you want to be in life. Remembering that whatever you give to life is what you get in return. Your ability to manage your time and self successfully will lead you to managing others as well. Uh, to manage, uh, managing others successfully as well. And of course, when you are able to manage others successfully, you would have succeeded in managing yourself for success in life. Finally, you can be whatever you want to be in life. If only you know what you want to be and you are focused you are persistent, you are articulate, and committed to achieving your dream. Let me re-emphasize that again, that you can be whatever you want to be in life, if only you know what you want to be. And you are focused, you are persistent, you are articulate, and you are committed to achieving your dream. I keep telling my students that I am a classical example of what Allah can do in the life of anybody. Because I was born into a home that could not give me even elementary education. But because of Allah, because I knew what I wanted to be by virtue of knowing or having an awareness of my environment, I became focused, I became persistent, I tried to articulate everything I want to do and remain committed to achieving them. So I have, I have success, I succeeded in achieving my dream of becoming a professor. And I thank the almighty Allah for leading me through up to this moment. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.
sir excellent advice sir thank you sir thank you so much thank you sir thank you sir rajiv kumar sir thank you very much thank you sir now i request our mohammad shamim sir to give word of thank okay assalamu alaikum good afternoon all i begin with thanking the almighty for all his blessing on us and we have we have of the department of business administration thank you to our honorable secretary janab bilia said for his constant support to the street <coughs> for its betterment my sincere thanks to our spot respected correspondent janab nawab mohammad abdul ali azrai respected treasurer janab haza nazimuddin our Lead Principal Bashir Ahmed, respected Vice Principal, Academic Doctor Sheikh Mohammed Bashir Ahmed, <clears throat> and the Vice Principal of Pen Doctor Kamal Nasir for always being our pillar of our strength. Thank you to the entire department and students for being a part of this international webinar and making it a success. A big thanks to Mr. Patrick Osasavi. who has taken time out of his busy schedule to conduct this webinar with experience and certain certain time self management will definitely prove beneficial to all um, sir your expertise and time management tips and bringing out the psychological science behind it has given us a better understanding of producing the planning setting smart goals etc self awareness self regulation and empathy for coworkers the three important aspects to efficient management i think this positively has been the most important takeaway boosting self confidence tips will really prove beneficial to our students for the self management definitely prove beneficial to all on behalf of the entire new college family we thank you sir thank, thank you, you sir thank you sir Sir, we had a wonderful time with you, sir. Thank you so much. I hope uh, I my accent was uh, understood by the people. Yes, sir. The students loved it. Okay. Okay. So everyone loved it, sir. We we took a note of it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it's all over. So the speech was very inspiring, sir. Thank you so much. So. We are true. Students, we have posted the feedback form. We have posted is form for collecting your certificates. Students can collect your certificates by filling up the form in the chat box. सर वो इधर आ अच्छा पैट्रिक सर वो इधर बोल रहे हैं ठीक है मर्जू क्वेश्चन हूँ माँ इल्ल सर पैट्रिक सर डस चिका रहा हूँ उटर <laughs> 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 <laughs>
இருக்கணும் <laughs> 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 ஒரு <laughs> 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 மோஸ்ட் வெல்கம் இப்போதைக்கு யாரும் டிஸ்டர்ப் பண்ணா ஏன்னா அவங்க வந்து போயிருக்காங்க பட் பிறகு ஏதாச்சும் டவுட் இருந்துச்சா கேளுங்க ஆறு மணிக்கு பிறகு என்ன அவங்க கேட் சரி ஓகே மேடம் ஆயிட்டாங்க போதும் வெறுவா சார் அவ்வளவுதான் சார் மர்சுக்கிட்டே கேட்டுக்கலாம் இல்ல சார் நான் கொஞ்சம் இடையில கொஞ்சம் மீட்டிங் இருந்துச்சு சோ போயிட்டு வந்துட்டு இருந்தேன் எஸ் Yes. Ah, Nero 18. Hey, I'm going to kill that. I'm going to kill that. Hmm. Officials are there, so we'll talk about private. Yes, I'm sir can we leave sir
على الفار بولو جي ايجت هو دي راكي دي اب كي جي एग्जिट हो जाएगा क्या आपको जस्ट आ रहा है चल रहा है हां एग्जिट हो गया जा हो गया जा हो गया जा लीव कर दो अच्छा ओके 